So, uh, say like people in history, when they can't find a solution to something, say like Hitler, he 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 thought of you know bringing back the economy and, and making everything better. But of course, he's like, you know what? I'm gonna win the Jews, and so he exterminated <laughs> them all. Well, not all of them, but six million of them. And he chose the worst way ever, and that's pretty much how it's been for history. People choose the worst options instead of looking it over with you know other um, nations and people and all that. Mm -hmm. Do you think that they're the worst options at the time, or do you think they're the worst options in retrospect? I mean, do you think it's the kind of thing that afterwards people look at and go, maybe we shouldn't kill the Jews? <laughs> or do you think, yeah? I think. I'm thinking because like I know I have some students in my class who think they didn't go far enough. That's that's not, yeah that's not a retro, well that's not a retrospective yeah because at the moment they thought okay then let's see uh, we need we need a fuck we need a fuck one of a population that's just to blame it on and they saw well they saw that Jews were successful in Germany so they're like you know what let's pinpoint it on them but as the quote as the quote says it's someone who never made up their mind and right there again they made up their mind exactly at that moment to what it is that they want to deal with the situation, which is kind of um, contradicting to what I said, which is, I figured it out. But overall, I think that's what it means, that someone who can make up their mind will often choose like, the worst choices because they think it's the best. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Well, I mean, that's a lot of us, that we make decisions that we think are the best. And in retrospect, we, we realize. And a lot of times, it's decisions that we should have known, you know? Yeah, well, I'll tell a story about that. Go ahead. Um, I feel like this quote is saying that um, people, I feel like this quote is saying people that do evil things usually justify their actions in one way or another. They probably find themselves trying to balance out the guilt feeling with some type of justification. Um, a lot of people drift from feeling like a good person and not feeling like a good person. Um, and once you justify evil behavior, it probably won't stop, which is the sad part. Yeah. And that's true. Once you justify the, the, the evil stuff, it doesn't stop because, well, why not? Let me ask that question. Why not? Because yeah. then you're like, well, I already did this, so this is not that bad either. And then you just keep justifying it. Exactly. Exactly. I think it was in this class I was asking the question, if you guys have ever seen the movie Bad Santa? No. Maybe you've seen the movie Bad Santa. <clears throat> oh, a few of you have. Okay. All of, these, all of these things have something in common. Um, the, if you remember the scene from when they're negotiating with Bernie Mac, remember that? Essentially, these two guys, uh, they're, they're, uh, one guy's a Santa, the other one's a, I, um, he played the dwarf, right? Well, I'm sorry, an elf. Sorry, sorry, the dwarf community out there on YouTube. Um, <laughs> the, the, he plays a, an elf, and, the, and every Christmas, they, 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 they'll, they'll do a robbery. So, he'll dress, so um, Billy Bob Thornton's character, he dresses up as Santa, his, 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 uh, his partner, and then they use that as an opportunity to go into department stores and to rob them you know, by, using that, by using that as a cover. So Bernie Mac plays a guy, I think he's like a, a, a mall manager or something like that, and he, and he finds out about it, he discovers who they are, so he goes to extort them, you know, to blackmail them. And, he's, and, they, and he says, I want half of what you guys are going to take. And they're like, no way, there's three of us, we'll split you know, one third. And so uh, the, you know, the character's like, you know, the, like hey, I'll, I'll handle this negotiation. He's like, 33%, one third, all the way. Bernie Mac goes, half. He goes, all right, 40, 30, 30. That's it. You get 40%. Bernie Mac goes, half. All right, fine. 45, 55, 55 uh, half. <laughs> so finally gets to a point where he's saying 49.5, and then what he goes, half. And so he, as he gets to that point, the, um, uh, but about the Thor's character goes, you've already come this far. Just give them, you know, so the guy just give them half. And they, they, they end up with, with half. You know? In other words, once you get, when, when you're negotiating and you say, I'll give you 45%. Well, what's the difference between 45 and 47? It's 2%, no big deal, right? So you go, okay, fine, 47%. Well, we were, now we're almost there. So how about we make it 49, 2%. You just gave 2%, well, it's 2% more. All right, fine, 49. Well, let's just make it simple. Right? Even math, 50-50. That's how you get someone to go from 45 to, to, to 50. <clears throat> You've already gotten someone to go this far, you might as well go all the way with that stuff. So if you can get people to do little, you know, little evil things along the way, 
at some point you kind of like you're far from the from the shore and you look back and you're like, how do I get this far from the beach? But you're already in the ocean, you might as well, right? It takes a lot for someone to realize that's where they are and to turn around and to, uh, to go back. What else? Yeah. I think that um like um bystanders could also be like evil, I guess, because they don't do good or bad, they, they're just there, like, allowing it to happen. Mm. So is, is evil something that you do, or is it something that you allow to happen? It's allowed. Hmm. Why? Because when you don't do anything, um, well, I could say, uh, pictures, and your friends, <laughs> your friends on a, your, your friends hanging off a cliff, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that happened, but... <laughs> don't ask me, I... I don't know how he's hanging from a cliff. You have the choice between to either you know, help them, or I guess not. But you're there contemplating whether to help them or not. That, and by the time you make your decision, your friend has already fall, fallen and has died. <laughs> so, <clears throat> right there... You will be missed. <laughs> you right there you, you pretty much allow your friend to just fall into their death even though you were contemplating whether to do good or evil. So is it because I, I could have done something and I didn't? Yeah. It was a matter of life and death. Yeah. Okay. So right now people in other countries are starving to death. So it's a matter of life and death and you're not sending them money so you're not doing something that you could be doing. Are you responsible for their deaths? So we're all pieces of trash, we're letting people die. <laughs> we all deserve to be Spartan kicked off that cliff. <laughs> Man, <laughs> this sucks. Well, it might matter. Like what got them, what, what got your friend in that situation in the first place? Like if he's just kind of standing there and some wind knocks him over. Or if he's, you know, dancing around and he falls off the cliff. I don't know what In this class, was it? Um, have we looked at the... The trolley case, the trolley case, the tracks. I know you might know it, but do we do it in this class? No. Uh, we'll do something different, what I have in mind. Um, forget your scapegoat. <laughs> <laughs> That's for another year. Um, some of you might recognize this from the memes. So let's say you've got. So you, so you decide that you're going to ditch a class. Not this one, because, you know. Oh, we everyone. did do that. Sorry, but we keep going. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, we might. Yeah, we might do it two years. Do we do? We did it yeah, two, because then there's the two, two choices ago. thing that you yeah. can either kill your friend or kill the people. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Oh, no, because we may have done it in, in, I have done two years ago. Probably. Maybe. We'll see. If you guys have seen this, too, tell me. So that way we don't waste time with it. Um, so the trolley tracks go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> seamless. Like, seamless professionalism in this class. So you just class one day, and you go walking over by the train tracks. And while you're out there, just kind of walking around, because that's what you do when you ditch, right? You go to the train tracks. And when you're out there, you see that one train track goes this way, and it leads into a tunnel. And that tunnel, you just happen to know it, because you're from here, a tunnel goes on for a mile. There's another tunnel over here, down the same tracks, same thing, it goes on for quite a while. And as you're out there, you see that there are five kids walking on the train tracks. And you're like, my god, what are they doing out here? Where are their parents? Completely ignoring the fact that we're ditching also. <laughs> but we're judging them anyway. And they're headed into that uh, tunnel. <coughs> so far so good? Yeah. Does this sound familiar? No. <laughs> you guys can see what I see. Some heads are going like this, some heads are going like this. <laughs> Alright, so then, same idea. You look down the train tracks in the other direction, and you've got another kid who's down there. Same thing. He is walking into the tunnel. Okay? One dude. One dude. Um, same question. Where's his parents? Why aren't they around? What's going on? But they're not. They enter. He enters. Sorry, it's bothering me that I'm walking. I'm something else. The camera's only so wide. When I'm writing on the board, I find I'm always walking off of the camera. It's just like a, a blank scene. <laughs> it's probably better looking at it. 
Now, as you do, as you see them going down, you look down the train tracks, and you see a train coming. Okay, that's a train. <laughs> I'm going to tell you it's a train. The right train on it. It says train. And this train, if it goes on its normal course, is going to go this way. And that means it's going to run over those five kids and set the tunnel. There's nowhere for them to go. However, you have the opportunity to pull a switch, a lever, right here. And if you pull that lever, then the trolley will go that way, and it will kill just the one kid. The question becomes, what do you do? And you've got a limited time to think about it. Now, think about the way that a lot of times we try to solve these questions. And I'm going to talk a little bit and give you guys a chance to think about it. A lot of times we'll try to solve these questions by like, well, but what are they even doing there? Wait, can't they just, well, can I yell at them? And no, 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 all those things are off the table. What are they doing in there? Does it matter what they're, what? Why aren't they in school? Why aren't you? <laughs> Can I just yell at them? No. Why? Because you're older than them, and they don't listen to people who are older than them. So they won't, so you can yell at them while you want, and won't do any good. So now, game on. Show of hands. And by the way, if you do nothing, you're doing something. If you're doing nothing, what are you doing? <laughs> you're, you're, you're allowing the train to go that way. Yeah, so by doing nothing, you're allowing something. So now the question is, show of hands, how many of you guys pull the lever? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine-ish, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So thirteen will pull the lever. How many of you do nothing, let the train go? All the rest of you, so one, two, three, four. <laughs> 23, so 10 of you, uh, left to eye. So <laughs> well, that's what it is. You, if you pull the lever, then, yeah. then that means that you're killing these five. If you do nothing, you're letting this one die. There's a distinction there between killing and letting die. Actively, if you pull that lever, you're actively setting it, I'm sorry, if you pull the, if you pull the lever, you're actively setting it to kill the one. If you do nothing, then you're letting the, the, ten, the, the, the five die. You follow what I'm saying. So, for those of you who pull the switch, why? No, it's too late. You can't call God now. Because it's not going to It's one person against a group of individuals. And I think it's because, in my mind, it's, it's a question of letting one person live and letting a whole bunch die versus letting one, saving one person and letting the other die. Mm -hmm. Plus, what if that, you don't know if that person is a racist. <laughs> 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 think, think about it the opposite way. Think about it the opposite way. I, I, I thought about that, but I also thought about what if that one person is like a genius, and then what if all of them are like if he was a genius, dummies? Then why the fuck is he a genius? What if he's on a mission to go figure something out? Like, no, 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 but I just think about that. No, but I just think about that. He's by himself. He or she is by himself for a reason, so, I mean. <laughs> Why not just send it? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So, so what might that reason be? <laughs> no one likes him anywhere. He's weird. <laughs> if he was, if he was searching for something, he could have just told the the what's his name? The, the person who was the train. Hey, can you stop it? Uh, Conductor. When? Stop! <laughs> 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 or he could have just let the train pass and then go look for it. So why the fuck is he there? <laughs> Answer him! He's yelling what's going on! No, 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 there, there, is no there, there is no other question. There is no other question just yeah. to pull the lever or not. But, 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 yeah, but that's the thing. We can think about all the reasons that we're doing right now. Well, why is he... How come... Wait, but what if... And the whole time... Uh, uh. <laughs> I wonder how, if we really do think that way when we're making these kinds of decisions. And so, yeah, so if you pull the lever, then you're going to kill the one. If you do nothing, then you're going to let the five die. And typically... Um, we, we think of it in terms of numbers, right? It's five to one, you know? And then uh, sometimes people ask the question like, well, will I go to jail if I pull the lever? No one's gonna know you did it. You could just... <laughs> and then, and then let things happen, you know? Oh, okay, so, so is it about numbers? 
and I'm, those who, who, who let the dice say no, those who pull it say yes. So if it's about numbers, then we run into a problem. Yeah, and by the way, if you do nothing, some people will say, well, I, I wouldn't do anything. It's not my fault. It's not, I didn't build the train. I didn't make the kids, I don't think. I didn't, I, didn't build, build the tr I didn't build the tracks. I didn't do any of that stuff, so I have no culpability in it. So let's say instead, uh, you guys come to class on, on Monday. And you're standing outside, and you're waiting, you're waiting, the bell rings, you're pulling on the door, you're, you're looking inside, where is he? And then, right before the bell rings, you see me kind of running up the hallway, it's like, oh my god, I'm so sorry, I was running late. I, I, I ran home to get some stuff, and I was running late, and I let you all in, and then I tell you, god, the craziest thing just happened to me at home. When I was leaving, I was going out, and, I, and my, my neighbor has this fence, and in the backyard of the pool, and I kind of glanced over there, and I saw this little kid, like a year old or so, just kind of like wandering around the backyard by himself, and the kid falls into the pool. And I'm like looking around, like, where are the parents? You know, the parents, and the parents are nowhere to be found. And I did, it just bothered me. So I'm like, if you're not responsible enough to have a kid, then just don't have one. But now your kid's falling in the pool? God, it, I'm sorry, it bothered me. Anyway, how are you guys doing today? <laughs> um, I'm a quick kid. I have no idea. <laughs> well, it wasn't my kid, it wasn't my responsibility. Well, what? What would, you, what would you think about me if I told you that I did nothing about it except for complain? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, yeah, that ruins my feeling. I, I like to think that I'm, I'm, that I'm beyond those kinds of judgments. Like you guys wouldn't be surprised by anything I did. But you guys could hear that I, I crashed a busload of orphans and you'd be like, sounds like something you do. <laughs> it's messed up, Scallon. But I didn't do it. Uh-huh, whatever, man. It's okay. What are we doing today? <laughs> um, yeah, rightfully, you'd have some questions. What would you do with the kid? Well, why didn't you help the kid? It's like, well, it wasn't my kid, and I have a responsibility to you guys, by the way, because if I had dove in there and, and saved the kid, I'd have been late here. I'd have gotten my boots wet, you know? I'd have had to buy new boots. I'd have gotten my, my phone wet. I don't, I don't know. I think, that, I think it's water resistant. I'm not sure what that is. Waterproof versus water resistant may ruin my, my, my watch. I don't know. But I had reasons to get here, so I got here. And I'm on time, so I fulfilled my responsibilities. Would you, would you all be like, okay, makes sense. <laughs> No. How many of you would have a problem with me not saving the kid's life when I could have saved the kid's life? A bunch of cold-hearted bastards. <laughs> One less person to worry about. <laughs> One less person to compete with in the world. Hey. Yeah. I, I, I imagine that many of you would probably, I, I hope anyway, many of you would have a problem with me doing nothing. And that tells us something, that you are still morally culpable, we think, when you don't do something that you could have done. So the question becomes now, what are the limits of that? Um, is the limit of that that I should have saved the kid from the pool? That's a pretty basic thing. Or is the limit that I should or shouldn't pull the switch? Because if I pull the switch, I'm, I'm responsible for it. If I don't pull the switch, I'm responsible for it. This is what we call just, you know, this is just being in the wrong place at the wrong time. And this, uh, in philosophy, it's called hard cases. A hard case is when you're, you're given a, a moral question and there are no comfortable answers. There are better and worse answers, but there's no good answer to it at all. Just, you know, even in like the case of having to save the drowning kid, I mean, I'm weighing out, you know, when I make a promise to you guys, I'm going to be here and be here on time. That's a promise I should keep, right? But then again, I could have saved someone's life. We might think like, well, in both cases, like you, if, you, if you show up late, you're breaking your promise. But if you don't show up late, then you're letting a kid die. So maybe letting the kid die is worse than breaking the promise. We have to kind of weigh those things out. And this is the way that a lot of our, our, our moral questioning actually does happen in, in the world. Um, you know, what's interesting is I don't know how many of you sat there during this question and asked yourself, well, which one's good and which one's evil? Am I doing good or am I doing evil by doing one of these two things? Now, whichever one you do, good is entering the world and evil is entering the world, no matter which one you go. But most of us don't think of it that way. We don't consider that, that question of, of whether we're doing good or evil. Where, in fact, most of the questions revolve around things like, why are they on the track? What are they doing? Why me? You know, why did that have to be me who's here? I mean, we ask those questions more. And so, it tells us something about how it is that mo most of us enter the world. And it's a hard thing for us to kind of get our heads around. Do you think that Hitler sat there in the morning, um, stretched, rolled out of bed, and said, all right, let's do some evil today? Do you think that the, that the Nazis sat around and were like, tapping their fingers and twirling their mustaches, and we're like, That's, how, how can we do evil today? Yes. 
<laughs> Absolutely. Maybe. And there are some of those people in the world who do do that. I, I have met some people who do that. But i got to tell you, man, they're incredibly rare. And even and we, and we find out who they are, they typically have some things in common. They're, they're just angry at the world. They're pissed off at the world. When you look at a lot of times mass shooters, mass shooters do kind of sit there. And, I mean, some of them do sit there and say, let's do some evil in the world. But by the way, even mass shooters, for the most part, they don't look at it as doing evil in the world. They look at it as the world has been horrible towards me. The world has, has, has put upon me. The world has treated me unfairly. Um, people you know, are, are, are horrible human beings. Well, human beings generally are just viruses on the planet. You hear stuff like that all the time. And they decide that they're going to weigh, measure humanity and find it wanting. And that they put themselves as the judge of all existence, of all being, and determine that everybody's life is equally, equally worthless. Whether I kill the person who actually fired me, or whether I just kill somebody who's walking down the street. It's all the same to that person. Because what they're trying to inflict on society is pain. Not even on specific individuals necessarily. But they're trying to, to inflict pain on society. And for them, that's not evil, that's good, that's balancing the scales. They didn't even think of it that way. Now, I hope that we can objectively say that what they're doing is evil. Um, but I do know a lot of people who won't even use language like that. They refuse to use words like good and evil. Um, I was telling a story um, about a, a documentary I watched about concentration camps. And there was a woman who was a curator of one of the concentration camps in Germany. And she was asked, you know, it's a, it's a museum today, sorry, it wasn't at the time. She, it's a museum today. And she's a curator there. She was asked about the Nazis being evil. And she, you see, she got very uncomfortable and she just said, I don't use words like that, like good and evil. It's like, well, can't we agree, though, that what they did was evil? And she's like, I, I'm not one to say what evil is. What evil is. I just, I wish they hadn't done it. You know, and I think that, I think that it did some very bad stuff, but I, I wouldn't call it evil. And the interviewer asked her, what would you call evil? She said, well, nothing, really. She couldn't even use the, the words of good and evil. And if you can't use the words good and evil, well, then you can't understand anything as being evil. You can't think of anything as being evil. All that you can really think of it is as, all that you can ever think of it as is, sorry. I don't like it, you know? Um, I, my grandfather was in Auschwitz. He was a concentration camp survivor. And I don't know if my grandfather sat there and was like, I wish Hitler hadn't done that. <laughs> but, you know, I, mean, I wouldn't say he's evil, but, you know, I, I just, I have a different opinion from, from, from Hitler. Um, a couple days ago, I was watching a documentary about, about Mangala. It wasn't really a documentary, it was like more of an infographics thing. And uh, I was reading that, I was like, they're, they're indicating that uh, Dr. Mangala, if you know who this guy is, he's one of the concentration camp guards, I mean, sorry, doctors. Um, he did selection. If you, uh, you know, when you got off the train, if you went left, you died. If you went right, you survived. It's a trip to me to think that there were three doctors at Auschwitz. I wonder if, if my grandfather got off the train in front of Mengele. And the reason, literally the reason I'm here today is because he said right instead of left. For whatever reason. It was largely arbitrary on his part. I mean, it wasn't unusual. He would walk out to the trains as they were arriving and would just tell the guards, everybody left and would walk away, meaning kill everybody on the train without even looking at them, with no consideration. I mean, he seemed to enjoy that kind of thing. But anyway, he had a thing for twins because he was really big on, on experimentation. He was a doctor. Um, he's a PhD in philosophy and a, and a medical doctor, incredibly educated. In case you ever get it into your head that being, that being educated somehow equates to being moral. They're very different things, man. In fact, you're going to find out a lot of times the more, the more education you get, the harder it is to be moral. Because it's easier to convince yourself that you know better than everybody else. And, you, and, that, you know better, and that you shouldn't be held to the same standards as everybody else because you're super educated, so therefore you're something particularly special to sit above all of humanity. Which is what Mangala did. He viewed himself as being above the people who got off of the trains. So, um, I was, anyway, the, the documentary thing was indicating that um, in one night, um, he killed 46 people, um, 23 sets of twins, and he was just kind of curious to see what would happen if you injected chloroform straight into the heart. So he took 23 sets of twins and injected all of them with chloroform, of course they all died. And he just makes a note of it, chloroform in the heart kills, kills them. Think about this, this is in one night. We think about someone like Ted Bundy who killed, what, 40 people, and we say he was one of the worst serial killers in history. Mengele killed, 40, uh, killed more than him in one night. 
and, and kept a journal about it. And you see, we were aware that it happened. Think about all of the people he was responsible for, for killing. And it's hard to look at him and say anything except for, that dude was evil. <laughs> you know, Not even just what he did was evil, but the fact that you are what you do, and that's the thing that he is. And of course, it goes back and begs this question, is evil something you do, or, or is it something that you are? And the answer is probably yes. There are probably some people who that's part of their being. It's part of their, of their existence. My being, I'm talking about capital B. Um, but it's, it's part of who they are to do those kinds of things. You know? And so I don't know, though, having said all that, Mengele didn't wake up every morning and say, I'm going to do some evil. We actually know what he was thinking. His son, um, he, he actually ended up escaping Germany, by the way. He died of a stroke in a, in a pool in Argentina. It was Argentina. No, Chile. Somewhere in South America. I want to say it was Argentina. Actually, I want to say it was Argentina. But he died in a pool. He had a stroke in, at the age of like 70-something, older man. He ne justice never caught up with him. He was never put on trial. He was never arrested. And his son uh, would visit him and do interviews with him. And his son wrote about those interviews. And he said that he, he struggled to kind of come to grips with the fact that his dad was the guy who did these things. And he said that his dad, over and, t over, and over again, who had no reason to lie to him after, after a while, was just saying, I don't know why everyone is so angry. I was just following orders. I did what I was told to do. I was doing what I was supposed to do. I was a soldier, and I was doing what I was supposed to do. And apparently, he seemed to genuinely believe that, at least as far as his son said. And his son had every reason to tell us the truth, because he was trying to discover the truth about why his dad did what he did. He had a good reason for it, to find out if, the, if there was something in his dad that would be passed along to him. So, Mengele's thing was just, I was following orders. Not I was doing good, not that I was doing evil. Because as we know from Socrates, the form of goodness appears to us last of all. Evil, that's natural for most of us. It's easy to do. Um, remember the, the, the greatest trick of the, the sort of loveliest trick that the devil ever played with you. He convinces that he doesn't exist. The devil doesn't have to come along and say, do this evil thing. For myself, certainly. I don't need someone to come along and go, come on, Scallon, do it, do it, do it. I just need you to put, put an opportunity in front of me. You come up to me and go, hey, Scallon, go ahead and do it. You're going to find I'm already doing it. <laughs> what? <laughs> As I've said, I can resist everything except for temptation. I don't need the devil to come along and say, hey, go, go and do this. Most of us don't need that. All the devil has to do is just, if he has to do anything, is present an opportunity. In fact, if the devil walks up to you and says, hey, I'm here, that makes it worse. Because now we're like, oh, shoot, now I know it's evil. Because that makes it clear to us that, that that's evil. It's like if God shows up and says, hey, do this. Wow, that makes it real clear to us that this is good. But if the devil just sits back and says, you do you. Yeah. Or if I go to the devil for advice and he says, just be happy. I want you to do what makes you happy. <laughs> and what makes us happy, of course, leads us headlong into harm. It causes us to do the evil things that, that we desire. Goodness is something that has to be studied and trained, persisted in. It's a daily exercise. For some of us, it's a minute-by-minute -minute exercise to do the right thing. You know, But that's the struggle. But that's also what makes it so, um, I guess, so tangibly good. Well, I shouldn't say, use the word good. It makes it so tangibly useful, anyway, practical for most of us. So, I don't know. I don't know. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques? I don't understand. We were all laughing so heartily a few minutes ago. Now we're all quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Put those away.